going on guys? Cool Fred here, back in action. Uh, about to go ahead and get this uh, E70 buttoned up. We got a few things um, we're gonna take care of here. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up this oil filter housing, get that intake manifold on there, and then we got belts and pulleys to do. So uh, you guys hang out and uh, let's get rocking. Alrighty, here we go. Uh, as you can see, everything cleaned up. You know, oil filter housing cleaned up. Got this gasket ready to go back in there for the oil cooler. Uh, I'm put that on first. I'm gonna put this on on here. Get that in place. Get my screws in. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Get everything torqued down. Then the oil cooler is gonna be ready to go in there. Got that thing cleaned up. Um, intake manifold be ready to slide in. And then uh, we're gonna pick up and go from there. Only thing I really gotta tackle. Um, got this hoop, this uh, cooling hose here. Um, that bad boy is almost ready to come out, but it's a connection down here to one of the heater, one of the heater hoses, uh, down there. It's like a little connection. So right about there. So, uh, I got like a little something, I think I'm going to get it out. I got like a long pair of needle nose pliers. I'm going to pretty much just going to pull this bad boy out of this holder there. So got that loose from the holder um my plan is i'm gonna grab that with my needle nose pliers and then i'm gonna get my pry bar and try to um press up against those needle nose pliers while i'm holding it and try to uh get that bad boy to slide off uh if that works out nice and smooth i'll show y'all guys the contraption that i'm using all right guys let's go ahead and get this intake manifold torque down uh, the intake manifold is 15 newton meters. All right, here we go. I've already got the off the housing torque down. That's um, 22 newton meters. Then I'm gonna put this oil cooler on there. And the uh, oil cooler, I believe, is 16 newton meters. All right, guys, uh, here's a little update on uh, this coolant hose connection down through here for this upper radiator hose. Uh, so I tried a little something and uh, it did like it did work. It worked like I thought it would. Um, so basically, I just kind of held on. Just put a little gentle, I put a little gentle pressure on this hose right here. And then I got a little pry bar here. So, uh, I just came down in there like so and pressed on that bad boy and I was able to kind of I had to get a good angle on it let me see so, so I basically held on there about like that there and then I was able to kind of Get them out for there. So that's him right here. This little guy right here was down off of there. So he got him out. But yeah, this is the hose. Breaks up already. You can see now that it is out, how much swell that rubber is there. Um, that's what a leaking oil filter housing will do to your hose. It will eat that rubber. So, uh, you always want to stay on top of that. All right, guys, we're back. Um, I did mention earlier in the week, it was actually a couple days ago, um, while checking the parts, I found that we had the incorrect belt tensioner. Instead of having a um, tensioner for the N55, we had an N52 belt tensioner. Um, so yeah, I double checked all my part numbers because I ordered a kit which came with the belt, the deflection pulley, and the idle pulley. So, uh, um, I found out that the part that I ordered didn't match the part number on the box. Um, so I called up FCP Euro the next morning. Um, I believe I spoke with a guy named Brandon, um, pretty cool guy. 
he got everything squared away for me. Um, uh, basically, I gave him the numbers that were on that box, uh, the incorrect one. And, you know, he verified it was the wrong one. And uh, I did have to take a couple of pictures of the box. But uh, it took them maybe less than a couple of hours to get it sorted out. And once they did, um, they actually overnighted me one. So basically, it was Wednesday morning when I called them. Um, they overnighted me one, and uh, it came in Thursday. And they also gave me a return label to uh, send the other one back. So that was, uh, I mean, it's my first time having a experience of getting the wrong part from those, from those guys. But um, they took care of it in a timely manner. So, but... uh. This is what we're about to get into next. We're gonna put the this belt tensioner kit on. Got a new belt tensioner uh, belt. Got an idler pulley and a deflection pulley. And uh, pretty much um, all these pulleys from uh, INA they come with the they come with the hardware. So. They got the hardware and the protection cap. So, that's good to know. All right, next, guys, what I'm doing is uh, I'm about to move that belt tensioner. about to move that bolt. Get that belt tension off there. protection caps all right this is one and um i've actually replaced uh these pulleys before on a um six series grand coupe but a lot of times you know you can see right here now this is the original pulley and uh it says ina on it so ina actually makes these things for bmw that is like a a, a manufacturer uh, that they use um and let me see let me pull this one just to see see if we i guess i better move my oil drain or, or my coat bucket from underneath just in case we drop some all right Let's see here. What does this bad boy say? I just always curious when I take off uh, old parts to kind of see see what they say on them. See who you know who makes them. And this one right here also says. Uh, INA Germany. Yep. All right. Um, pretty much from here, just uh, it's a couple of torch sockets. I'm not sure which one's on that bottom one. I guess I can look at the, but it looks like they're T50. So the big pulleys on the bottom. We got the smaller one on the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh replace those real quick. And uh once I get everything back on, I will put the belt on. Alright, I got the both of the new pulleys on. Uh, just gonna come in here and put the new uh protection caps on there or the dust cover, whatever. They want to call it. All right. So those are in there. And, uh, 
this is the tensioner, the tensioner device. And it goes, it's got a little hole, uh, it's kind of keyed. It's got like a little, this little notch here goes in that little section of that hole. All right. I think I got it wrong. Got it up too high. Got to put it in a different groove. All right, there it is. That's the way it's supposed to go. Gets up in there like that. Go ahead and tighten them up and torque them down. And uh, we're gonna torque it down. Torque spec on that is uh, 38 newton meters. There we go. All right, I'm gonna see if I can uh, if I can put this belt on. If I remember how to how it go. All right. Let's see here. I did take a picture of it. That's what I strongly recommend. Uh, snap a picture. That way, you ain't got to be trying to remember to balance the weight around the, the edge of this balancer pulley. So it kind of makes sense to just go ahead and get it around everything else. There you go, guys. Slide it on in here. Alrighty. So pretty much, um, now the tensioner still got the pin in it. From you know, pretty much all new tensioners come come with that uh that locking pin to hold it in place. And so once you get it around, you put goes it wraps around the crank up and over this. Uh, I'm not. I guess that would be the deflection pulley up and over this pulley, back around the. Um, well, it goes around the power steering pump and the AC compressor on the back side. And then it comes up, then down around this idler pulley, then back around the alternator. And. Uh, I normally try to just give them a little tug. Just kind of rotate them around a little bit. That make, uh, pretty much what that does is uh, that lets me know that it's on the groove good, sliding good. And if they're all in the, in the groove good, then I'm good to uh, go ahead and release that tension. So I'm gonna get my T. T60 pull in there, or put in here rather, and release that tension. And uh, let's see here. And that, this belt will be installed. All right. There we go. New belt tensioner and belt drive is installed. So that's going to wrap up our belt kit. All right, guys, what I'm doing next is uh, I'm going to put this coolant hose in. Just some good old glass cleaner. 
I just uh, spray pretty much these it's got O rings in here, rubber O rings that seal around up in there, and uh, and pretty much you got these clips. So pretty much all you got to do is just push it, push it on, and it should clip in. Uh, but the first first order of business is um, I got to snake it in here because it's got to kind of fit under this power steering hose. Just kind of got to angle it in here. Well, pretty much this connection here that goes to the heater hose connection. So, and up here by the the um, also housing the the, the, um, the outlet up here by the, the cylinder head that goes through the oil filter housing. Okay, I got that click in. When you hear it click like that, you know you you know you're in the money. So that's what you want to hear it click. Now, I just gotta. Mess with this bad boy down in here. Kind of just line it up and get this to click in. Alright. So that might be a little bit tricky. Because uh what we're actually dealing with is just that connection down there. Gotta get that to connect up. So I just gotta play around with it a little bit and get the snap in. All right, I finally got that connection in there for the for that coolant hose that goes to the heater hose section. Uh, essentially, what I did, I pretty much just uh, just took it uh, took it back off and put a little petroleum jelly in there, put a little Vaseline in there, so that O ring will slide on, and it. Uh, yeah, pretty much slid right in. I did have to hold it and get a pry bar to kind of get it to work in until that clip snapped in. So, got that done. Next thing I'm about to do is uh, I'm going to drop this fan on in there. Put the electric fan in there. Now, I already had the fan out before I uh, started with the repairs. Good, I'm dropping it. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right, here's the fan. So Pretty much what it is, uh, I believe in one of the earlier videos I showed the clips where they slide in there. Basically this, this door right here, uh, or this flap goes in and out and then you get it down in there. So pretty much what you do, you just slide it on down in there. Got a couple, couldn't make sure the electrical connection is okay. So what's going on now is we got a little connection down here. The the lower radiator hose is catching on that. So I'm about to take a pry bar and kind of move that hose out of the way and it should have slide right on down. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick.
Five more miles in. He locks in. Lock in. Good to go. All right, guys. Next up, um, I'm pretty much uh, getting everything put back together, starting to connect some of the connections on the engine computer. And one thing uh, I pointed out that there's a it's a ground wire uh, that attaches to the block back here. Uh, it's a little tricky to see, but it's right here where my hand is right there so you want to make sure that that's connected you don't want to under any circumstances leave that loose or you will have um, problems and the vehicle won't start um, the thing is is uh, there's vacuum supply holes I just got to feed this down through here and uh, it's going to connect down here what supplies vacuum over for the turbochargers and uh, if it has an exhaust flap it will go for that too they just snap in here to the valve cover because of course on this model they uh they put the, the little vacuum reservoir is built into the valve cover assembly 